Hi everyone, it's Luke here from Apple Online Academy. And this video will be more about talking, not any fancy graphics or tutorials. It's more about me sharing with you some tips, some things which I have learned over the years of using macOS. It is the video you have chosen in the last voting. So if it's something you don't like or you want to see different things on the channel, make sure to participate in the next one. But the title of this video is 10 different things you should not be doing on the Mac. So let's focus on it now. The first part is straight away a bit controversial. I would like to know your opinion on that. But I rarely quit applications on the Mac. I don't like to be reopening them. I'm keeping basically everything open. Of course, it depends on the kind of the app, but all of these native applications like Pages, Keynote, Mail, Photos, Notes, and so on, they can all stay on the background. When you finish typing in one document, it doesn't mean you need to quit it completely. You need to turn off pages. There are big chances that you will need it again over the day and work on something else. And I don't like these loading times, I don't need to be waiting for it. Maybe it's a wrong example, but what if you look at Microsoft Office? I'll, for example, open Word here. And look how long it takes. It's constantly bouncing and bouncing and it takes ages before it opens up. But I can just leave it on the background. Macs are really good in keeping these background apps in some sort of hibernation. So they are not taking anything, they are just waiting there to be used again. But this is definitely not one-sided. They are heavily consuming applications like Final Cut. If I go back to Mac and open Final Cut, and then also open Activity Monitor, you can see that it takes a huge portion of a CPU and memory as well. So Final Cut, Photoshop, uh, Lightroom, all of these similar apps, you should definitely quit straight away once you finish working on them. Really good indicator is the activity monitor. Once I have it open, let's search for Microsoft Board as well. You see it doesn't take anything as I said before. And same will be with pages. So my conclusion is to leave most of these apps open and don't bother with them. If you don't know if the app is doing something on the background, you can easily check it using the activity monitor, find out it's consuming a lot of power, then you should quit it. And you should quit it properly, not just closing the window. Now let's have a look at Safari. There are so many ways how to reach your favorite pages, how to reach your recently opened pages. But most of the people just bookmarks everything and then you will pile it up with hundreds or thousands of bookmarks which you are afterwards lazy to manage because it's very annoying process to do that. So why don't we avoid putting things in bookmarks in the first place? I actually bookmark only things which I am not visiting often. It might sound weird, but I'll explain it later. The thing is that if you are reopening something all the time or if there are pages you need to be using all the time, it makes sense to maybe keep it open, not bookmark it. You can even pin it in Safari window. I use the Apple Online Academy website all the time or YouTube. So I can just drag the tab to the left and pin it in the Safari window. Now it will be accessible all the time and I don't need to bookmark it at all. Also if there is a page you are revisiting often, Safari Autofill Search will remember that. I am a big fan of Formula One, so I'm visiting the website very often. And I don't need to be bookmarked. I can just open a new tab, type letter F, and Safari predicts that I want to visit the Formula website and it will fill it in automatically, so with just one click, I can reach the page. To explain better what I meant by the pages you do need to visit often, it's for example that you are paying some bills once a month. There can be many different bank accounts and pages you need to revisit and you don't want to be searching for them again. That's something I'll put in bookmarks. 
also some other tools like translators, converters, some downloader, things like that. It's good to have it in bookmarks so you don't need to search for it again. But it's not something you are using all the time. I actually want to stay on Safari for one more thing. The thing is connected to tabs. I said that you should keep some tabs open. Well, only the tabs that are important and that you really need. But we actually end up with the opposite thing. We will have at the end of the day hundreds of tabs open and most of them we don't need at all. Well, it's not such a big deal. Unlike uh, Google Chrome, which really takes a lot of power with every open tab. In Safari, it's kind of okay. But anyway, it can be quite confusing to be scrolling between so many tabs. So I like to close those, which I don't really need. I have few techniques and recommendations how to do it and how to organize them better. If it's something I need for work, research or some project I'm currently working, I open new tab group and put all of these related tabs there. Once the work is done, I can delete the whole tab group and it's all cleaned up. If I find interesting article, I definitely don't leave it on the background. I put articles in the reading list. This way I don't lose the website and the article and I can get to it anytime I want. Also, I don't need to leave any YouTube videos open. If it's something I like to watch over and over, I will put it into my favorites. But if there is just a video I want to only watch, but don't have time right now, I can save it to watch later. It's not a big deal to quickly scroll through 10 tabs at the end of the day. But if you leave it and when it accumulates to many many more, it's again a bit annoying and long process to be cleaning that. Maybe one more tip at the end is connected to Google searches. You should always close the Google search tab straight away once you finish. There is a very small chance you will need the same term, the same thing you were researching before and you can easily close it because you can start your search from any tab anytime you want. It doesn't make sense to keep Google search on the background. Stop shutting down your Mac. This topic is very specific. I have made a whole separate video about this. You can also see it, it will pop somewhere here, probably here. But anyway, I will summarize it here quickly. The thing is that the normal Mac basically doesn't need to be shut down at all. You can always leave it on. You can only put it to sleep or just leave it to go to sleep automatically. The thing is that the Mac is not sleeping. The Mac is doing all of the things on the background. The Mac is performing the maintenance. When is it in the sleep mode? If you don't give it the time in the sleep, once you open the Mac after shutdown, it will need to do all of these backup searches, indexing, maintenance things. All of this needs to be done while you are working on the Mac and it will be consuming and it will be slowing it down. So give it a time to rest and give it a time to do these tasks on the background. There is this feature which is called Power Nap. It should be on by default but you can quickly check it in system settings. If you go to battery and then click on the options button on the bottom. If it's not activated, so make sure to activate it. It's connected to this maintenance which I was talking before, when the Mac is asleep. I know a lot of people who don't want to pay for the Apple monthly plan for iCloud Plus. Why? iCloud is great. I have all the devices always in the perfect sync. I share all the documents, photos, everything between all of them. I can take a photo on my iPhone and it's instantly on the Mac without needing me to transfer it manually. Imagine what a premium price you pay for all of these products and you don't have 99 cents to pay for iCloud. I myself paid for the second level of it. It's 200 gigabytes and it's around $3. I have all the devices in the perfect sync and I can use all the features of all of them together. So why are you limiting yourself for such a low price? Take advantage of it. Don't update your Mac, that's another topic. I understand the fear. 
People in general don't like changes. I know already how this works. I perfectly know everything on my Mac. And then somebody decides, I want to change this and this. And you don't like it. Well, why? Instead of embracing the change, instead of learning some new features, learning new ways how to do things, you are stuck on the spot and you think yours is the best. Just go ahead and update to the newest software whenever you have a chance. This is what you have paid for. You got the Mac, you got macOS, and you are getting all of these updates for free. So why not use the full potential of it? I'm making courses for all of these new softwares, new systems which comes every year to make it easier for other people to discover the changes for them. But even without that, it's just the beauty of technology that moves ahead, so you should not stay behind. You don't need a backup. This is a story for itself. Well, that's true. You don't need a backup until you actually need it. Why are you not making it? Is it a question of money or laziness? Either way, it should not interfere with you making the backup. Okay, you are paying high price, you are expecting some quality, and you are getting that. The Macs are really reliable. It's very unlikely to happen something like that. But you never know when you drop it, lose it, and so on. And with all of that, you are losing all of your data, because you didn't make a proper backup. I have just ordered a new external drive, 5TB drive. And it's a standard one, you don't need any of these expensive SSDs to just make a backup. And it's not expensive thing at all, you can definitely get a nice large disk for under $100. And then what you need to do, you simply set it up for Time Machine and you don't need to bother with it at all. It will do all of the backups automatically. So it's neither expensive nor time consuming. All you need to do is to time to time plug the disk to your computer and that's it. With this time to time, I would not go to weeks or months. It can be easily done every day. Just create some sort of routine, like you are charging phone every day. You can plug the disk for just an hour or plug it for a night and it will do the job and you are sure that everything is safe and you will never lose anything. Stop printing your documents. I call it paperless office. You don't need all of these documents. All you need is to use the new technologies and features of the things you have with you. You can perfectly well scan the document with your phone. You can sign it all electronically. You don't need to be printing it out and signing it manually. It can be all done on the computer. And in 21st century, all of these electronically signed documents are accepted the same way like are the paper ones. You can even fill up all of the forms online. Everything can be done on the computer. It has many advantages. It's not just about not having the papers. Imagine carrying all of these things with you. Well, if you have it electronically, you can just put everything on the iCloud and you can carry thousands of documents with you without any problem and knowing that you don't lose anything. It will not get stuck somewhere in the wardrobe. It will not pile up. You don't even know what is there. Here, you can easily organize it in the folders on the Mac or on iCloud, and you have everything within the reach anytime you need it. There are so many mail providers and mail applications which you can install. Well, you can basically scroll the App Store forever for that. It's never ending list. But you actually have a mail app installed in your Mac already. I myself have few separate accounts and it's very very complicated process to be logging into each one of them separately. I just connect all of the accounts to the app and I'm receiving all the emails in one place and it's so convenient. You need to spend a little bit more time in the beginning to set it up all properly but it will save you a lot of time in the long run. All you need to do is to open a mail app Go to the mail menu on top and select add account. Here you will choose what mail provider you are using and then simply follow the on-screen instructions to connect it. Do it with all of your emails and you will be conveniently receiving all the mails into one app. 
Is it the best mail app of all? Probably not. But it's already there. You can perfectly fine use it and you don't need to install anything else. With this I have actually touched another topic. The topic is about installing some other additional software to your Mac. What is missing there? What Apple is not including? You definitely need this, you definitely need that. You see advertisements everywhere for installing this kind of software, this anti malware software, some maintenance software. Clean my Mac there and there. You need uninstalling software. Do you really need all of this? Short answer, no. You definitely don't need any of that. Most of these apps are totally useless. They are just filling up space on your Mac. They are advertising super fast Mac. But what is true is they actually do something on the background, constantly doing something. So instead of speeding it up, it's actually slowing down the Mac. Mac is doing the maintenance automatically. As I said before, in the sleep mode, everything is done without you needing any additional software. And there are also some other things in built in the system which protects you from the malware which is on the internet. Apple doesn't talk about it, but it's there. You don't need anything special for that. At the end, I want to have one more word about the well known Clean My Mac app. I have it installed on my Mac, I got it for testing. So you can perform some cleanups with it with one click. You can do some recommendations. Unlike some other similar apps, it's not so bad, but you really don't need it. You can manage your files yourself. You can manage your logging items, background processes, everything you can do yourself. You don't need to pay anything extra for these apps. Saying this probably doesn't go very well with my affiliate link in the description here. But I just want to be fully honest with you. I don't want to be recommending you something just because I can earn money on that. I want to be fully honest with you on this channel. I want to bring you all of the tips, tutorials, my thoughts, my experiences. This is all for free. The only thing what you can do for me in return is to give it a like, share it, subscribe. I appreciate your positive comment a lot more than having few dollars on the account. So I will be really happy to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.